When you think about blood sacrifices in A Song of Ice and Fire, you probably think about Melisandre burning people alive to appease the Red God, or Daenerys burning Miri Mazdur and Khal Drogo and Rhaegal to hatch her dragons, or even the legend of Azor Ahai, who forged Lightbringer after thrusting a sword through the heart of Nyssa Nyssa. But the greatest blood sacrifice of them all was an accidental tragedy. Or was it? This video will consist of me putting together my last two brain cells to cover everything from Summerhall, and how it vaguely relates to Dragon Dreams, Blood Sacrifice, and Stannis the Manus. So please put on your tinfoil hats and enjoy. The tragedy of Summerhall took place in 259 AC, 39 years before the start of Game of Thrones. King Aegon V Targaryen ruled Westeros, and he was in the final year of his 26 year long reign. For reference, Maester Aemon was still at the Wall at the age of 61, but Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon weren't quite born yet. Barristan Selmy was a young man, and was knighted by Aegon V himself at the age of 16, after Barristan unhorsed both Aegon's son Duncan the Small and Aegon's Kingsguard Duncan the Tall in attorney. Aegon V was born the fourth son of the fourth son of a king, Daron II. Daron's heir, Baelor, died in attorney, and both of Baelor's sons died as well. So when King Daron died, his second son, Aerys I, ruled, but he never had any children, so the throne passed to his brother, Mykar. Mykar's first son died of an STI, his second son drank wildfire, and his third son became a maester. So when Mykar died, in 233 AC, a great council was held. The lords debated between Arion Brightflame's infant son, who was named Megor, Mykar's eldest living son Aemon, a maester, and Mykar's youngest son Aegon, who spent his youth traveling Westeros with Sir Duncan the Tall, and had formed super scary opinions about the small folk deserving rights. Megor was dismissed because he would require a long regency, and some people thought he'd grow to be insane, like his father. And Westeros doesn't have a great track record with kings named Megor. Fearing the lords would pressure him to take the throne, Aemon sent himself to the Wall, allowing his brother Aegon to ascend the throne at the age of 33. As he was the fourth son of a fourth son, 11th place in the succession at the time of his birth, Aegon became known as Aegon the Unlikely. In his youth, Aegon went by the nickname Egg. He and his brother Aemon both had dragon eggs they hoped would hatch, despite the last Targaryen dragon dying 47 years before Egg was born. Egg kept his egg at Summerhall, a vacation residence of the Targaryens built during Daron II's reign. Daron II married Maria Martell of Dorne, so Summerhall was built in the Dornish marches. In 209 AC, there was a tourney at Ashford Meadow. Egg was supposed to squire for his brother Daron, but Daron got drunk in a tavern. Daron shaved Egg's silver hair so he didn't look like a prince and he fooled Sir Duncan the Tall into letting Egg squire for him instead. After the tourney, Dunk convinced Mykar to let him keep Egg as his squire, so they spent years roaming Westeros completing side quests. They settled a dispute between Sir Osgri and Lady Weber, and got caught in the middle of the Second Blackfire Rebellion, when Daemon Blackfire II tried to solo Bloodraven's army. By 258, Aegon was consumed by a search for dragon lore. He dreamt of dragons coming back to life, and believed only with dragons would he ever yield sufficient power to make the changes he wished to make in the realm. He became obsessed with finding out how his Valyrian ancestors hatched dragons. Aegon still kept the dormant dragon eggs he and Aemon had as children, so Aegon commissioned journeys to places like Ashai hoping to find texts and knowledge that didn't exist in Westeros. Some people say that the Ashai were dragon riders long before the Valyrians, and that dragons originated from the Shadow. That thousands of years ago, the Ashai visited the shepherds of Valyria, and taught them the sorcery and magic involved with dragon bonding. Aegon made bitter enemies during his reign, and treason and turmoil followed, ending at Summerhall in sorcery, fire, and grief. There isn't a lot we know for sure about the tragedy at Summerhall, 
we know that Aegon invited many of those closest to him to the castle in celebration of his first great-grandson, Rhaegar. We know that very few witnesses survived, and those who did refused to speak about it afterward. The maester of Summerhall wrote down what happened before the flames consumed him, but the note was half destroyed. It tells us that Aegon had seven dragon eggs, pyromancers, and wildfire. All signs point towards this being a dragon hatching attempt, so Aegon could regain the lost power of his family and force his malcontent lords to accept his social reforms or face the dragons. The last line of the note probably says that someone would have died if not for the valor of the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, who was Aegon's lifelong friend, Sir Duncan the Tall. Dunk's last act was probably saving Rayella so she could give birth to Rhaegar. Jaehaerys and Shera, their children Eris and Rhaella, and their newborn Rhaegar all survived Summerhall. Aegon, Duncan the Small, and Duncan the Tall all died, and likely more as well. The whole Targaryen royal family might have been there to celebrate Rhaegar's birth, and it's never confirmed when several Targaryens from this time period died. Aegon's sisters Rey and Daella, and their children, Arion Brightflame's son, Magor, and Arion's wife, Daenora, Daron the Drunken's daughter, Vaella, as well. Finally, Rael Targaryen, the wife of Ormond Baratheon, and thus the grandmother of Robert, Stannis, and Renly. All of those Targaryens could have burned at Summerhall. The official reason that the World of Ice and Fire gives for Aegon trying to hatch dragons is that he wanted more power to force the lords to accept his social reforms. But based on some other context, Aegon might have had other motives as well. When Aeg was young, roaming Westeros with Dunk, Aerys I was king for over a decade. Aerys left most of the ruling to his hand, Bloodraven, and spent his time reading books and scrolls. Aerys read about dragons returning in a prophecy, according to Aeg. He and Bloodraven shared an interest in ancient prophecy and the higher mysteries, as well as arcane lore. That's as specific as the book gets. We also know that Egg's older brother, Daron the Drunken, was a dragon dreamer. He foresaw the death of Baylor Breakspear at the tourney at Ashford, and he dreamed of dragons returning. So Daron's dreams and Eris's prophecy about dragons returning were both known to Egg. Maester Aemon was a dragon dreamer as well. In fact, all four of these brothers were dreamers, and you could argue all four were killed by their dreams. Aemon said that he still saw dragons in his dreams, and a red star bleeding in the sky. I see their shadows on the snow, hear the crack of leathern wings, feel their hot breath. My brothers dreamed of dragons too, and the dreams killed them, every one. We tremble on the cusp of half-remembered prophecies, of wonders and terrors that no man now living could hope to comprehend. The prophecy Aemon is talking about is the prince that was promised prophecy, the hero that will be reborn amid salt and smoke, and wake dragons from stone. It's unclear which prophecy Aerys I read about. Perhaps it was the prince that was promised, or perhaps it was even Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy, the one that led him to unite Westeros under the rule of the dragon. In the books, we don't know what Aegon's prophecy says, but George R. R. Martin did confirm it exists. In House of the Dragon, the prophecy mentions that the prince that was promised will be of Targaryen blood, and that hero will unite the realms of men against the threat in the north, the Others. It could be that any number of Targaryens from this time period found that prophecy and falsely believed they were the ones who would wake dragons from stone and become Azor High. If Aegon believed that, the belief passed to Rhaegar, who was born at Summerhall amidst the smoke of the fire and the salt from the tears of those who cried there. As a boy, Rhaegar read something in his scrolls that made him believe he needed to become a warrior. He and Maester Aemon both believed Rhaegar was the prince that was promised. But once Rhaegar's first son was conceived beneath a bleeding star, Rhaegar thought Aegon was the prince that was promised. Of course, Rhaegar died on the trident, and Aegon died in the sack of King's Landing. Officially, 
a character named Young Griff, appears in Book 5, claiming to be Rhaegar's son Aegon, who was saved from King's Landing and raised in Essos. This may be the truth, or he may be a Blackfire pretender. Who knows? Rhaegar, who was born amidst the grief of Summerhall, often visited the ruined castle as a young man, but he wasn't the prince that was promised, it seems. Dunk's heroic act of saving Rhaella didn't only mean that she could give birth to Rhaegar. Years later, Rhaella gave birth to Daenerys, a far stronger candidate to fulfill the prophecy. And because Rhaegar was born safely, he went on to father Jon Snow, another prophecy baby. So that's how a lowborn hedge knight named Dunk may be the greatest hero Westeros has ever seen. By saving Rhaella, both Daenerys Targaryen and Jon Snow could be born. On his deathbed, Maester Aemon hears the story of Daenerys' dragons in the Far East, and he realizes he was wrong all these years. He says, what fools we were, who thought ourselves so wise. Daenerys is the one, born amidst salt and smoke. The dragons prove it. I must go to her, I must. Would that I was even ten years younger. Daenerys woke dragons from stone. She succeeded where all her ancestors failed, from Aegon III to her own father, Aerys II. What makes Danny's dragon hatching different from all the rest? Well, blood magic, probably, which is why it's most comparable to Summerhall. Melisandre says that the Lord of Light cherishes the innocent. There is no sacrifice more precious. From his king's blood and his untainted fire, a dragon shall be born. She's talking about burning Edric Storm alive, an innocent child, to help Stannis wake stone dragons. Danny hatched her three dragon eggs after putting them into a fire with Miri Mazdur and the corpses of Khal Drogo and Rago, her son. Rago is the innocent one in Danny's sacrifice. While she doesn't burn her son alive, she inadvertently bargains for Rago's death with Miri Mazdur, who trades Rago's life for Drogo's. Danny thought the witch would sacrifice Drogo's horse, but Miri Mazdur says, That was a lie you told yourself. You knew the price. It's possible that Aegon V found his answer with all his reading and obsession with dragon lore. That only death can pay for life. Could Aegon have been trying to sacrifice the innocent baby Rhaegar to pay for the life of those dragon eggs? Maybe, and it might have worked since Danny's sacrifice of a Valyrian baby resulted in the births of Drogon, Rhaegal, and Viserion. So both Danny's and Aegon's hatching attempt involve fire and the sacrifice of an innocent Valyrian baby. The main difference with Danny's sacrifice is that the child died instead of the parent. At Summerhall, Aegon died instead of Rhaegar. If the children had died, like Rhaego, and like Melisandre believes is necessary, Perhaps those hatching attempts would have worked. It's quite morbid to think about, but the death of someone totally innocent might be the only worthy sacrifice to wake stone dragons. It was Melisandre who mentioned there is no sacrifice more precious than someone innocent. Danny's sacrifice worked because somewhere in her subconscious, she was willing to sacrifice Rago. Will Stannis Baratheon be willing to sacrifice Shireen? The burning of Princess Shireen was a controversial scene on Game of Thrones. But according to George R. R. Martin, it was one of the plot points he explicitly mentioned to the showrunners. Martin said, I told them who would be on the Iron Throne, and I told them some big twists, like Hodor and Hold the Door, and Stannis' decision to burn his daughter. Stannis, and more so those around him, believes he is a Zor Hai reborn, the prince that was promised. He struggles with the decision to burn Edric Storm, until the decision is taken away from him when Davo saves Edric. But the foreshadowing is there. Azor Ahai killed Nissa Nissa to forge Lightbringer. Daenerys Targaryen killed Rhaego and Miri Mazdur in a ritual to birth her dragons. Stannis will burn his daughter Shireen, but what will it accomplish? Assuming Stannis wins the Battle of Ice and defeats House Bolton, a battle which will occur early in the Winds of Winter, he'll likely go back to the Night Fort to regroup. Stannis believes his true war is against the Others, and by that time, the Army of the Dead may be bearing down on the Wall. 
it would be a perfect time for Stannis to gain some sort of power or luck, or literally wake a dragon from stone as the others are approaching. At the wall, Jon Snow's corpse is being preserved in an ice cell. It's possible that when Stannis makes his decision to burn Shireen, the stone dragon he awakens is Jon Snow. Jon is a metaphorical dragon in the sense that he is Rhaegar Targaryen's son, and the blood magic of Shireen's death might pay for the awakening, or resurrection, of Jon Snow's body. The stone aspect of this prophecy may refer to how Jon is simply dead, frozen still like Danny's stone dragon eggs. Or, it could refer to the stone grayscale on Shireen's face. Jon the dragon will awaken when Shireen's stony face is sacrificed. This is just a theory though. Maybe Stannis will burn Shireen, realize it was all for nothing, and get killed by a white walker. Who knows? It's just a cool way to connect Jon Snow's resurrection to Stannis' sacrifice of Shireen. <sighs> so far, we've discussed what happened at Summer Hall, how Aegon might have been driven by prophecy, what Danny did differently in her hatching attempt, and how blood sacrifice could show up again in Stannis' story. Next, Let's look at how this post-dance, pre-Danny era of Targaryens tried to wake dragons. Targaryens who dream of future events are called dragon dreamers. Daenys the Dreamer had a prophetic vision of the doom of Valyria, and it was enough to convince her father Aenar to move the family to Dragonstone for good. Daenys was the first dreamer we hear about, and Daenerys is the most recent. In Book 1, Danny dreamed of her brother Viserys, who told her that she woke the dragon, and he dissolved into one, its molten eyes meeting Danny's. Later, she dreamt of the black dragon again, and felt its fire cleanse her. After her own dragons hatched, Danny dreamt she was Rhaegar on the trident, except she was on dragonback, and the enemy host was armored all in ice. It seems that she dreamt of fighting the others. Just about every Targaryen after the last dragon died attempted to hatch dragon eggs. Nine mages crossed the sea to hatch Aegon III's cache of eggs. Baelor the Blessed prayed over his for half a year. Aegon IV built dragons of wood and iron. Arion Brightflame drank wildfire to transform himself. The mages failed, King Baelor's prayers went unanswered, the wooden dragons burned, and Prince Arion died screaming. Daron, Arion, Aegon, Aemon, and more were all plagued by their dragon dreams. They drove Daron to alcohol addiction, drove Arion to delusions of wildfire, and potentially drove Aegon to attempt a blood sacrifice at Summerhall. They couldn't get the dreams of dragons out of their heads. Could these Targaryen dreamers have been seeing Danny's hatching in the future? and misinterpreted their dreams into thinking they must be the one who would wake the dragon? Dany saw the doom before the doom happened, and Aegon the Conqueror saw some type of magical northern threat before the others began to stir. So maybe these dreamers were dreaming of Daenerys, decades before her sacrifice in the Dothraki Sea. Maybe, or maybe they were having the same type of dragon dream Dany had before she hatched her eggs. I made a whole video about Daenerys and dragon dreams, so you can watch that if you're interested. We do not care. So Aegon V had dreams of dragons, knew of prophecies that Aerys I read, and knew that his brother Daron dreamed of dragons returning as well. Aegon gathered his seven dragon eggs and an unspecified number of Targaryen relatives at Summerhall. Pyromancers, Wildfire, and Normal Fire combined to form a tragedy in which Aegon, his eldest son, and his best friend Dunk all died. Dunk was presumably able to save Rhaella before dying in the fire himself, so Rhaella gave birth to Rhaegar right outside the castle. That means that both Jon and Daenerys, who both have a role to play in winning the War for the Dawn, would have never been born if Summerhall had claimed the life of Rhaella Targaryen. So, that clearly means that Sir Duncan the Tall is Azor Ahai, and the true hero of A Song of Ice and Fire. Rhaegar would grow into a prophecy-minded Targaryen himself. He would get all sad and emo with his harp when he'd visit Summerhall, and he believed that either he or his son would be the prince that was promised. 
the prince that was promised is said to wake dragons from stone. Daenerys literally did this in Book 1. And there's a theory Stannis will try to do this by burning Shireen, which might resurrect Jon, another prince that was promised figure. It's interesting that immediately after the Targaryens lost their dragons, they spent over a century obsessing about bringing them back. From Aegon III, who witnessed the dance of the dragons firsthand, all the way to Aerys II, dreams of dragons never left the house of Targaryen. Let me know in the comments what you think really happened at Summerhall. Did Aeg try to do a bit of blood sacrifice? Or was it just a goof that resulted in his and his son's deaths? Thanks for watching and subscribing. I am rectangular, and you are a circle. I am rectangular.